BMI may soon take a back seat in diagnosing obesity as a groundbreaking report from The Lancet introduces a smarter, more personalized framework focused on measuring excess body fat. This radical approach aims to improve treatment, expand access to medications like Zepbound, Ozempic, and Manjaro, and tackle the stigma surrounding obesity. Join us on The Downsides to explore how this game-changing update could redefine care for patients treating the disease of obesity. It's great to have you back at The Downsized. If you're new here, I'm Christopher Durham, and I'm excited to share our story and insights with you today. My wife Lorraine and I have been on an incredible adventure with GLP-1s, and together we've lost over 140 pounds. I've lost 94 pounds since starting this adventure. On September 23rd, 2024, it's been life-changing. The medication I've used along the way included compounded terzepatide, Monjaro, and Zepbound. I've had identical results from all three, and each has played a role in helping me shed the weight and reclaim my health. Before we get into today's topic, here's a quick medical caveat. I am not a doctor, and this is not medical advice. Always talk to your healthcare provider before starting or changing any weight loss treatments. And of course, please take a moment and like and subscribe. Hit the bell so that YouTube alerts you every time we publish something. Let's take a look at the update from The Lancet that's shaking up how obesity is defined and diagnosed. For years, BMI, or the body mass index, has been the primary way to assess obesity. But we all know BMI doesn't tell the full story. My own experience proves it. Even when I was heavier, BMI alone couldn't reflect how my weight was impacting my health or the risks I faced. And in fact, as I've lost weight, I will continue to be in the overweight range, regardless of what my doctor says. This update is especially important to those of us fighting the disease of obesity, because BMI is one of the key diagnostic measures that doctors use to diagnose obesity. And it's also one of the measures insurance companies and PBMs use to approve or deny coverage. This new framework introduces a more personalized way to understand obesity. Dr. Francesco Rubino, the chair of the commission explained, BMI provides no information about health at the individual level, which undermines medically sound approaches to health care and policy. Instead, the focus shifts to measuring excess body fat, the real driver behind obesity's health risks. The new framework prioritizes direct measurements of body fat whenever possible. Tools like DEXA scans or bioimpedance analysis can measure body fat percentage and show where fat is stored. When these tools aren't available, the report recommends using anthropomorphic measures like waist circumference, so 102 centimeters or 40 inches or more for men, and 88 centimeters or 35 inches or more for women, which indicates central obesity. Waist to hip ratios above 0.9 for men and 0.85 for women signals higher risk. Waist to height ratios or a ratio of 0.5 highlights health risks associated with body fat. BMI alone is no longer enough. Instead, they suggest confirming obesity by combining BMI with other methods or using at least two of the anthropomorphic criteria when BMI is not available. The report also introduces two categories, preclinical obesity, which is excess fat without organ dysfunction, which provides an opportunity for prevention, or clinical obesity, which is excess fat causing organ damage or functional impairments, such as heart failure or mobility issues. Dr. Rubino emphasizes clinical obesity is chronic system illness caused by excess adiposity that can lead to severe end organ damage. This shift is exciting for those of us using GLP-1s to treat the disease of obesity. More personalized health care, more personalized treatment. Doctors can better assess individual needs and fine-tune therapies. It also brings with it expanded access, so insurers may adopt broader criteria for treatment approval. And hopefully, it reduces stigma. Recognizing obesity as a complex, multifactorial disease combats weight bias. Theoretically, this will also bring earlier intervention. Preclinical obesity monitoring encourages proactive care and presents a focus on health, but treatment success will emphasize overall health improvements, not just weight loss. 
Dr. Fatima Cody Stanford highlights weight bias and stigma cause major psychological and physical harm. Tackling this isn't just about social justice. It's essential to advancing prevention and treatment. This resonates deeply with me. Like many of you, I've faced judgment based on size. This report reframes obesity as a complex condition shaped by biology, environment, and genetics, not simply a matter of willpower. The endorsement of this framework by 76 organizations, including the American Diabetes Association, signals a major shift towards science-driven, compassionate care for patients who are using GLP-1s. If you found this update helpful, do not forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us grow and continue sharing updates like these. How do you feel about this new, more nuanced way of diagnosing obesity? I'm Christopher Durham, and we are The Downsized. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.